Traditional clothes or something. So they one of my yes. dad and like in that in the, in the short term, short pants and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes they were they were married. <laughs> she was a uh, she worked for the Albany paper and wrote a column for them. So she was a newspaper. <laughs> 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 This is called an idiot's camera. Yeah, that's what she's Any idiot can operate it. That's why I can operate it. <laughs> she had a lot of eye problems, I know that. This isn't Molly? This is Molly. Oh, yeah. she had eye problems. She had bad ways. She has a yeah. That's all that reading, you know. Yeah, I, I seems to run in the family. Brother Willie. Maybe Wally's brother. Yeah, that's a good thing to say, maybe. <laughs> And he lived where? Uh, the picture was from Arizona, so I think he lived in Arizona. Uh -huh. See, Molly lived in when she was young. One of the great 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 uncle raised her, not at all. Maybe it's Yeah, right. Say sure. baby, because I'm not, you know, I'm not sure. All I go by is what Grandma put on the back. And he lived in San Francisco? Uncle George Wallace. Where are you living? <laughs> yeah, I'm like about probably a Williams, Williams uh, wife. Do you remember her name? Ben George, George Lounge. Oh, George Lounge's wife. Right. That's what it says on the back. <laughs> okay. Does she have a name? Wife. I don't have a name for her. Well, George has a picture of a very nice live in Michigan. Descendant uh, from Mary Lounge. For sure. Who is the daughter of Samuel. Yeah, you got a nice picture of that. Here's going to
reasons why this event is at the heart and soul of our heritage. 100 years ago, for example, to this very day, a similar group of friends, of family, the Matthews and the Lamps, gathered here to erect this monument exactly 100 years ago now. It also happens to be, as, as you know, um, not to this day, but on July 30th, 1793, the beginnings Papa? of continuous settlement, the beginnings of continuous settlement in the, what became the city of Toronto began with the arrival of the Queen's York Rangers uh, building Fort York and uh, the appearance of the HMS Mississauga in Toronto Bay with uh, John and Elizabeth Simcoe, our Adam and Eve, our, our, our founders, although we have many other founders, the Aboriginal founders who have been in and around this area for uh, many centuries before that. We're also here because of some extraordinary work by members of the Lount and Matthews family by Mark Frank, who is perhaps the chief organizer of this event, although he's tried to remain very much behind the scenes. We're here because there are some corrections that need, need to be made in, in the various plaques in the historical understanding of the past, and that is being corrected in the plaque that will be uh, unveiled today. Um, the Ontario Heritage Foundation, the Peter Matthews Committee of Pickering, the Lloydtown Rebellion Association, the Newmarket Historical Association, the Toronto Historical Board, and the Town of York Historical Society. If, they, if they're represented here, I hope they will tell me if that is, I should know if that is the wonderful former York Pioneer Historical Society, and a number of other people interested in this history and committed to what is central to the radical tradition uh, in the city of Toronto and in the province of Ontario and the old British province of Upper Canada. Uh, well, you will be hearing later, and we can talk more informally later too, about the uh, traditions at the reception afterwards. Uh, I would like to set a good example, and I have not so far of being brief. Uh, I'm going to turn it over, uh, turn over the speech making to a number of people who are with us and who have played an important role in preparing, preparing this event today. Um, I've been a city alderman, so nothing guns, you know, whatever. I, don't know. Uh, I think perhaps we'll leave it at that for a moment, and I'm going to ask the first speaker, Dorothy Duncan chair of the Ontario Heritage Foundation to come forward, Dorothy. Mr. Chairman, honoured guests, members of the Lowton Matthews families, friends, colleagues, girls and boys. It's a great pleasure and a great honour to be here today representing the Ontario Heritage Foundation. As you may know, we were very pleased to cooperate 
in erecting a provincial plaque to Peter Matthews in the little village of Brome in December of 1992. That was a particular personal pleasure to me because I grew up in that same village and a great part of my history had been the 1837 rebellion and the part that Mount and Matthews played. I bring from the people of Ontario, from my board of directors, from the staff of the Ontario Heritage Foundation, our sincere thanks and congratulations to all of you who have worked so hard today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have now David Burnside, the chair of the Toronto Historical Board. David. The Toronto Historical Board operates as an advisory body on heritage matters to the Council of the City of Toronto. As such, we have a role and responsibility to the community on matters of local history, and it is in that role that I'm here today to speak to you. We are gathered today as a result of events which occurred somewhere in excess of 155 years ago. Often history is written as a tool by an individual or group representing their particular perspective or prejudice. History as told can be controlled by the times and the government of the day. While that may seem somewhat abstract, it bears some relevance to our gathering here today. There has been some grave injustices here. Peter Matthews and Samuel Lount were heroes. They were both patriots of the rebellion of 1837-1838. They both led a rebellion against the family compact government of Upper Canada. Now, Peter Matthews, as you know, was born in 1786 and was a prosperous farmer and an influential community leader in Pickering. Angry with the government development policies, he led his neighbors to join in the rebellion of 1837. Samuel Lount was born in 1791 and was a blacksmith who settled south of Lake Simcoe in 1815. He became a reformer in the 1830s and actually sat in the assembly between 1834 and 1836 until he was defeated by corrupt practices. He led a large party in the rebellion. Both these men were captured, tried, and eventually hanged on the 12th of April of 1838. That is the story of one injustice. It is that grave injustice that we are completely powerless to correct. The second injustice has followed upon the first. For some time, Peter Matthews and Samuel Lount have not been portrayed fairly in our histories of Upper Canada. They were heroes and patriots fighting against a corrupt and non-responsible government. There has not been enough balance to the portrayal of the history surrounding the rebellion of 1837-1838. Some of the participants of the rebellion have been glorified, while others remain in the gray world with the inappropriate stigmas that follow. For its part, the Toronto Historical Board will commemorate Peter Matthews and Samuel Lamp by installing a plaque at the site of Hangman Square, which is at King Street West and Toronto Street. It is here, despite the petition sound by, th signed by thousands of citizens, that Peter Matthews and Samuel Lamp were hanged for their participation in the rebellion. These two gentlemen were the last to be hanged at that site. Today, the Toronto Historical Board joins with the family and friends of Peter Matthews and Samuel Lamp to call attention to their true role in, history, in the history of this province and to put things right. Although the treatment of history to date has been unfair to these patriots, it represents an injustice that we can right. It is one that we must right. Thank you, David. Uh, we have uh, with us uh, the member of the Legislative Assembly for Durham West, which is the old Matthews site, the old Matthews homestead, and has many connections with the events that we're celebrating here. <coughs> so I'd like to introduce to you Jim Wiseman. Jim. Uh, thank you. Well, it's uh, indeed a pleasure for me to be here as a former history teacher and, and one who has actually read uh, The Firebrand by William Kilborn. I'm, I'm <laughs> the, um, I guess the significance of this date uh, for me is not would not be uh, appropriately said unless we talked for a moment about the tradition that, that was created in, in 1837 when a group of people decided that, that they had enough of being excluded from the process, excluded from, from the day-to-day -day decisions of government, and had actually been uh, victimized having press, press uh, machines thrown into Toronto Harbor and, and had been intimidated from, uh, from uh, many different positions. Uh, they decided that on that 
that they had had enough, that they decided to rise up and to say enough is enough. They took the examples from the traditions of the Reform Act in 1832 in England and they said, we are going to do some things here different than they have been in the past. They met a stiff brick wall, they were not allowed to express themselves, and they took the only recourse that they felt was appropriate, and that was to rise up in rebellion against them. The tradition that they created was really the establishment and the beginning of what is a democratic tradition in Ontario and Canada by saying that every individual has a right to be heard, every individual has a right to participate in the government process, and that everybody has a right to, to, to equal access to government and that it should not be denied to any. And having said that, they made the ultimate sacrifice by knowing, knowing that when they, they decided to rebel that they were perhaps putting everything that they owned and cherished on the line, including their lives. To, to be here today and to be able to speak at this occasion is a great honor for me because I really believe that in the traditions of this country, uh, they stood above. They set an example for what we have to do in this country today. The example of self-sacrifice, dedication to a cause, and to, and to put forward in an unselfish manner those things that, uh, aside in an unselfish manner, those things that uh, that we have to in order to, to create a common good and to do something for the common good. These two represent that significantly. They represent that almost a, in a spirit that is still alive, given that if you look around, you can see the number of people that are here trying to keep that spirit alive. So I'm particularly honored to be here. And I can tell you that the, uh, the tradition of radicalism and, and developing people in Pickering who do not sit idly by and let governments trample over them continues. So thank you very much. <laughs> the guys who stopped the Pickering Airport. It's going to be a bigger and better Mirabelle. We have some friends living in Dadu who are with us on that one. Uh, and speaking of uh, what was my government, uh, I still, I guess, have to admit that I'm a card carrying member of that party. I have a surprise for you. Uh, one of the two people who stood up and voted against the War Measures Act in 1970. And our own MP for this area, Member of Parliament David McDonald, was with us. I, that's the good news for David. The bad news is that we're going to stick him with the job of seeing that this pardon gets through, and it's damn fast. <laughs> is the government of Canada, after 100 and 200 or 300 centuries, finally decides to do something about this. Uh, there has been a Neho Opstat issued. Uh, David, I don't want to put him on the spot in detail, but surely in general, we're going to expect his government do something about the rendering of justice to Blount and Matthews. And with those happy words, David, it's a great pleasure to have you here. <laughs> I'm not sure, Bill, whether it's safe to speak after that. <laughs> uh, I do want to say, along with the others, that uh, this is a very important, if not moving, occasion. It, it's an odd thing to be here commemorating acts of people that took place more than 150 years ago and uh, recognizing that in the recording of those acts uh, some of what was regarded as true at that time by most of the people is now seen in the light of day not to have been true. That is, if I may say so, a very Canadian trait. Uh, Bill referred to the War Measures Act, uh, which I opposed some years ago now. And uh, I have to tell you, Bill, I wouldn't want to take a public opinion survey at the time that, that uh, a few of us decided this was not in the best interests of this country. Uh, fortunately for me, a number of people since then have, have begun to see it perhaps in a somewhat different light. Of much greater significance is the courage and leadership that was shown by these two men and the importance for us in acknowledging the uh, not only their courage, but their insight into the political realities of their time. There are no less pressures on all of us today, not those of us just who have public office, but all of us as citizens. And it is a very different and fast-changing and pressured existence that we all are living through. And maybe in setting the record straight, in giving the pardon that these men so justly deserve, we can continue to ask ourselves the question, are we representing the best interests of our fellow citizens of our society and our community? 
Somebody once referred to Canada as a peaceable kingdom. And I think we need to reconsider in all its dimensions what that means. And as the federal member for this area, I will certainly do all of my part. Thank you. Thanks, Well, the uh, speech making is over. We're just going to do perform a few things. Uh, Mark asked, uh, well, at my suggestion, we tried to see if Toronto's poet laureate, Ray Souster, could be with us today. Unfortunately, he cannot. Uh, I commend all his vast body of short and medium long poems to you. But he did give us special permission to read poem he wrote right here about this. This is separate inscriptions that he wrote in his mind for the graves of Lount and Matt. I, Samuel Lount, coming from Pennsylvania to find work, to live a free man, found work but no freedom. So, fashioning a pike in the forge, I walked to down Young Street, proud of it as a banner. Though the hand was struck down, I hope that metal still glows. I, Peter Matthews, having fought the Yankees with the Brock Volunteers, snipped out worse tyranny thickening here, an insufferable cesspool. Reluctantly, Turning my plow into a sword, I hacked at the leg irons chaining us all, but found only justice dangling from a British noose. Since it's uh, located right above it, a certain anthology, uh, there's a wonderful poem by Dennis Lee. I'm not going to read it all, but there's just the last the last couple of verses about Mackenzie coming again. It's a celebration of Mackenzie and that that wig he used, the red wig he used to cover his baldness that he got from a fever. And uh, I'll just read the last verse and a half. Uh, it has to do with uh, uh, the various uses that the Americans and the, uh, the establishment wanted to make of this society and this town. Uh, he goes on, the Yankees want the country for a Yankee barbecue. The compact want the country for their merry green domain. They'll all play finders keepers till Mackenzie comes again. Mackenzie was a crazy man. He wore his wig askew. He donned three bulky overcoats in case the bullets flew. Mackenzie talked of fighting while the fight went down the drain. But who will speak for Canada? Mackenzie, come again. Now, the piper, Melville Johnson, is going to play for us. Uh, and during the playing of the flowers of the forest, the wreaths will be laid and the new plaque will be unveiled. Just a word about the flowers of the forest. It, uh, the tradition is it's a lament for the loss on Flodden Field uh, in 1513 when the Scots were defeated by the English. Uh, the pipes themselves, you'll be interested to know, were made in Perthshire, Scotland, not too far from Mackenzie's birthplace, Dundee, in 1834, the year this town became a city. They are MacDougall bagpipe. So it seems appropriate that they're with us along with Piper Johnson. Now, uh, just one more word, and then I'll ask him to begin, and you will see uh, for the laying of the wreath, Elvira Lount and Annette Matthews, and then for the unveiling of the plaque on behalf of the Matthews and Lount families, um, George Lount of our community and Richard Matthews of Michigan, because uh, this is very much a cross-border affair. We're very grateful to the huge interest and input of time and. Uh, everything else that Richard Matthews and the Matthews family from the other side of the borders uh, of the border have made to this particular memorial and we welcome them here to Canada and to the land of uh, their 
heroic ancestors. So while Mrs. Lount, uh, Matthews, Mr. Lount and Mr. Matthews lay the wreath and unveiling, unveil the plaque, we'll hear from Piper Melville Johnson, the flowers of the forest. <laughs> Well, you know, Peter Alderman are crazy historians or whoever all else. One of them turned out to be, I guess, about the liveliest judge we've ever had on the bench of the Ontario Supreme Court, the late Dalton Wells. And another one turned out to be Bishop Alan Reed. So, a uh, descendant, a member of the Matthews family, who's privileged to have with us the, the Lord Bishop of Ontario from Kingston, uh, Right Reverend Alan Reed. Thank you, Bill. I, I wonder, you know, I, I wonder as the, those Samuel Louts and uh, Peter Matthews and Bishop Strahd looks down at us and they say, oh, really? my goodness, uh, one of the Matthews. Uh, how on earth did that ever come about? <laughs> on both sides of the family, I mean, in, in, a, in a way, the irony of it, because uh, Mackenzie, Lout, and Matthews. Here has a bishop in Toronto for 10 years. As the bishop, Lord Bishop of Ontario. They hated bishops. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I, I, I don't hate their grandson, no, Alan. No. <laughs> and, and, uh, and they hated, they hated, the, well, they hated the young Strong. And then on the other side, here, here, what does, uh, what does, what does Peter Matthews and Lout think that? Uh, 
I'm sitting here. What does Bishop Strong think that I'm standing here? Dear Bishop Strong, turn over and then we'll Oh, my. I think he's along. <laughs> anyway, I'm delighted to be here and honored to be part of it as part of the Matthews family. And I then, therefore, have come to dedicate it as I pray, O oh, eternal God, God of history, God who acts through people and events. We come before you to dedicate the memorial for two Canadian heroes, Samuel Lauf and Peter Matthews. We give thanks to you for their vision of responsible government. We give thanks to you that, in a way, they were ahead of their times. They perceived that leaders in government are given positions of responsibility for which they are to be held accountable before those whom they govern and before the eternal one. Today, their goals are seen as steps forward for Canada. But in their day, what they spoke and did was seen by a powerful minority as revolution. Because of their dedication to their vision of responsibility, in a real sense, in the events of Canadian history that followed, they helped to forward the concepts of political freedom, democracy, responsible government, which we as Canadians want to cherish and foster. We give thanks, O oh God, for Samuel Lout and Peter Matthews. We dedicate to this memorial on this 100th anniversary of the unveiling of the historic necropolis monument. It reinforces our memory of them and what they accomplished. And in practical terms, corrects inaccuracies on the first monument. O oh Lord God of history, we dedicate this memorial to these ends. We give thanks for Peter Matthews and Samuel Lawrence. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you, Alan. We're just about finished. I'd just like to uh, say a few thank yous, and then we'll have a chance to uh, talk more informally at the reception back near the Acropolis uh, Gatehouse. You all have a chance to come and, and read the words of the, of the plaque. Uh, just uh, before I do, one word that uh, Bishop Reed's remarks reminded me of. I was put in the rather strange position of having to produce a, a radio opera with Harry Summers for the CBC, and the last scene, which we never could, did happen, I think Mackenzie and Strawn interfered with it, but uh, Mackenzie appeared, uh, was dying, and uh, Bishop Strawn came to visit him on his deathbed. Because you see, it seems to me the old Tory tradition and the old radical tradition are some of the best things we have in this city and this province. What happened after that was a kind of a, a mishmash of, of, of liberals and conservatives in between. We lost our Tory radical tradition. I like to think uh, in some of the years in the later centuries and some of the acts of their descendants, uh, we're recovering both the Tory and the radical vision, which was very unhappy with the materialism and the uh, me first is in the simple uh, truths of selfishness that had so easily can dominate an affluent society. So we thank these men, these wonderful heroes, and I thank you all for coming. But more specifically, I'd like to thank uh, a number of people. Um, I, uh, I, I mentioned already that Richard Richard Matthews has come over from Michigan. He's an eighth generation direct descendant of Peter. Uh, and uh, this it was really his original idea to make this happen. Uh, George Lount, uh, who is with us, a number, of, a number of us have known him for a long time, the great great grand nephew of Samuel Lount, uh, Elvira Lount, of course. Um, and uh, uh, the, I, I should mention the whole Lount and Matthews connection, many of whom are here. I'd particularly like to thank Mark Frank, the coordinator of this event. I point out to you, and I'll be showing to you, a wonderful little booklet, uh, a tour of 1837 monuments that he has just published uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, please, if you haven't seen it, if there aren't enough copies out to look at them, please ask me. I'd particularly also like to thank uh, the wonderful, the, for the wonderful hospitality we've had here, Alan Best and Louise Winston, who have done so much to make this a good and and uh, and happy event. Uh, I don't want to go the distance of the uh, the, the Welsh reporter who was 
who was saying grand things about a Welsh funeral. Uh, everything was going very well uh, until Mrs. Megan Richards and Mrs. Morgan Richards both fell into the grave and <laughs> broke their ankles. And then he added, casting a, a pall over the entire proceeding. <laughs> uh, but we're having a good funeral. Thanks. <laughs> and to all of you, all who participated in the program, all who have come and kind enough to speak. And uh, I would ask you, uh, I think we'll, the Piper will lead us. Is that right, Mark? We'll follow the Piper back uh, to have some refreshments. And please think of things. There are a, few of, a number of you, I'm sure, will have some incidents, some things to recall. So we'll have a little more uh, informal recalling of, of stories about uh, our history and about these two. Thank you very much. That concludes the formal part. Piper. <laughs> They kill 4,000 people just to go in and get one of their own thugs, like Noriega, when he breaks loose. Huh? <laughs> and uh, on the 5th, and I hope you're going to join us. Yeah. You're here for a while. Uh, I'm here till the 7th. Tune in. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, you, and she was at another <laughs> table. Well, she told me about this. Mr. Branch. She came and sat down. Uh -huh, this is my daughter. Come on, Dennis! I still don't. I've got my music camera. Did you get their pictures? You should go. Yeah, we should. Eat those. Okay. Okay? Okay? I got his name too, didn't I? Can I get one with you, Eric? Oh, closer. Jerry, get on the move. Yeah. Hey, you're gonna help me hold Jake? 
by this brother. So Clint. don't goof up. Passed away a little <laughs> lout, a blacksmith, but not a simple one, who in 1938 was hanged by ruthless imperialists for doing the best deed of his life, fighting for freedom. Are they going back to the car? No, no, I'm going to get the, the washroom across the street there. George, you want some juice? Or do you want coffee? I was thinking if uh, Jason a little while. Oh, okay. I was thinking if you could get down to the back. Very great, great. go around it. Whoop, somebody fell down already. <laughs> well, actually, did you see that silver tree? What did that one? The things off, Peter, are on. Yeah. You know, like yeah, I'm saying video by Peter Lowe. <laughs> Titles. 
Well, I think you were a little faster than Nathan. He's, a little, he's not quite as fast as you are. Well, I'm not racing the show. No? Okay, Nathan will just tell you. Okay. No! <laughs>